Hi, I'm Rich McNutt with Hunter's Choices and Wild Things Cooking Show. And what I'm going to do today is grind up some more of my venison that was left over from the last couple processing jobs. And I'm going to take 10 pounds of that venison and turn it into Italian sausage. And Italian sausage is what we used in uh, Cook Show 1 on the pizza. And on Volume 3, we used it in the gluten-free pasta salad. So with the Italian sausage, after it gets ground up, you can run it through the machine with a stuffer on it and put it into lengths. But in my case, I'm just going to take the Italian sausage and bulk it. I'll make about 10 pounds of it, and then I'll put it in one pound packages. First thing you want to do with your grinders, you want to have it lubed. So either you put some fatty pieces of meat, force it in the tube here, Lube up your grinder a little bit. Now I mix my meat 30 to 40 percent with pork. So some of the strips have already been cut. If you go on the internet on the website, there's a real detailed version there on grinding venison and how to package it and how to store it. So the size strips that you cut on your meat depend on the size tube that you use. It's okay for the meat to be slightly frozen. Now these pieces of meat are too large to get down the stuffing tube so I'm just going to make them smaller. Don't worry about the silver skin. This is tendon. It'll even grind the tendon up so you can eat the tendon, but there's some hair stuck to that so I can throw it out. Mom's real fussy about the silver skin and the hairs. But you need a little fat in your meat so it binds together if you're gonna do hamburgers or you're going to do a meatloaf. It needs to be able to bind together, so that's what you need the fat and the meat for. Um, more so than just flavor. This is a piece of venison. It's dark black meat. Pork is your other white meat, so this is pork. Okay, this bowl is about 10 pounds of meat, so I'm going to set this bowl aside to mix with the spices. I'm going to finish grinding while we have the grinder set up. Now you notice most of my meat is, it's all wet because it was in the sink and water. It doesn't hurt your meat to soak it in the water. It adds some different bacteria, but with our spices we'll, we'll take care of that. But One of the things the water does is washes the adrenaline out of the meat and that's where most of your bad flavor comes from. So if you have meat that kind of tastes a little bad, or if you're, if you're doing a deer that has a lot of adrenaline in it, you'll, you'll smell the meat when you're, when you're cutting it up. It'll smell a little stronger. You can put the meat in water and soak that adrenaline out because the adrenaline will come out with the blood. And then you'll have meat that tastes a lot nicer. But if you run it through a second time, that helps in the blending a lot. Some people actually put the spices in it and run it through the grinder again to help blend the spices in. I don't do it that way, but that is an option. Industry standard is to grind it twice. When you grind it twice, it looks like professionally ground meat, even though this is venison mixed with pork. One of the recipes I really like from this is the venison meatballs. How you take care of your meat in the field and how you take care of your meat at home totally determines the flavor of your meat. Okay, that's the bulk of the meat. Now I'm gonna turn the grinder off 
and I'm going to package this meat in one pound freezer bags and then we'll put them in the freezer for storage. Only fill your bags about a little more than half full because the meat expands and then I left a little bit of zipper open so we can force some air out of there. I like to keep my meat flat because it's easier to in the freezer to store. Now I'm getting most of the air out of the bag and then they'll finish by closing it up. Now this bag's ready. Might be a little more in a pound in there, might be a little less. The other thing you need to do is make sure you label it. Whatever you can understand. For me it's venison, burger, January 2015. And this is just plain burger at 30% pork. All my burgers 30% so I'll just so I'm just gonna write venison burger on there. Now these are ready to go in the freezer. Don't just stack them all up six eight deep in the freezer because they'll take three days to freeze so spread them out let them freeze solid and then stack them up. The frost free freezer creates freezer burn. It's a process of taking the frost out of the freezer. It takes the water out. It takes the water out of your meat. If you want to know more about taking care of your meat in the field, that's where the book Hunter's Choices comes into play. You can get it as an audio download and you can get it as an audio book. Okay, this is the 10 pounds of meat that we had in a white bowl. We're gonna run it through the grinder for the second grind. And then we're gonna add the spices to it to make Italian sausage out of it. And then we're gonna take the Italian sausage and package it just like we did the hamburger in the freezer bags. So what do you want to do for supper? Go out. <laughs> Go get some chicken. <laughs> chicken? <laughs> We're about done grinding the second time through. So I'm going to take the machine apart and clean it up here. And then we'll start adding spices to the burger. Some people will take and add the spice to the bowl, but I'll take two cookie sheets, spread it out, and add the spices that way. I'll show you in a minute. Okay, welcome back. I went and cleaned up the grinder and made some more room on the counter. Now you can take your spices, I'm using Hyde's Wild Game Italian Sausage Seasoning. You can take the spice and just dump it in a bowl and then work it in a bowl. But what I do is I take two pans in the bowl, split it up, add spices to all of them and just kind of blend it all together. It makes it for a little quicker blending. The directions are in the box. Uh, read it, it shows that you're using 10 pounds. and. For me it's a little strong so I like to put 11 pounds of burger so whether we got 10 or 11 pounds we're just going to use what we have and then we're going to use this spice and mix it up. Now I use about one third of my seasoning each time. And I can blend them up real quick. Oh, one third of the seasoning again. What the real sausage makers do is they have a a blender that just blends the meat. I don't know if you get a KitchenAid and use the meat blender attachment, but you can't do the whole batch at once anyway. 
I do my own meat for the simple reason as I can control how the meat's handled. And that controls your flavor of the meat when you're done. I know I'm not gonna get somebody's deer venison that was drugged through the swamp. I'm just gonna dump the rest of this in the bowl. Yes, and some people know that I was a concrete mason or a cement mason so I could get my brick trawl out and just kind of mix it too, but I could get a mud board out here and mix mud. sausage maker Kurt talks about sausage he says the biggest issue that people have with sausages is they don't mix it enough it smells really good so it's, I use this in pastas and spaghetti sauces of the Italian recipes now you can get some sausage skins and run this through the grinder and it'll fill the sausage tubes for you or you just get a sausage stuffer. It's kind of a horn thing with a pump on it. It forces the meat into the tube and then you got your own links or sausage like you know, bratwurst size, hot dog size. Now I'm looking at the color of the meat and the color is consistent all the way through. There's no dark spots from the spice being heavier in one spot, no light spots from the spice being light in that spot. So I think we're ready to bag this. Okay, just like we bagged the hamburger, we're gonna bag the Italian sausage. If you have a big family where you're cooking for six people, put in two, make two pound bags or five pound bags, whatever you need to, for your recipes. Same thing with can and venison. If salmon and venison, if there's only two people in the house, you might be better off canning and pints because the quartz would be too much. Okay, one of the other spices he has is breakfast sausage, which is really good. Makes about five pounds of meat. All right, we're gonna take these out to the freezer. And then Thanks for watching The Wild Thing Show, Cooking Wild Game. This is Rich McNutt. Become a wild game cooking master by watching our professional chefs show us how to prepare outstanding wild game meals, desserts, and side dishes. Thanks for watching The Wild Thing Show Cooking Wild Game. This is Rich McNutt. Enjoy.